everyone. Wesley here from the Mental Awareness Foundation. I just want to say welcome to uh, today's amazing interview uh, of Under the Radar with, uh, with Graham Quirk. Now, you may be asking what is Under the Radar, and maybe you might be asking this question too, Graham, but it, it's where we at the Mental Awareness Foundation just take the time out to, to interview people who are doing great work that maybe not many people know about it. Maybe they're flying under the radar. And, you know, we feel it's our job to bring more awareness towards those uh, beautiful deeds. Now, for those that live in Brisbane, uh, they most likely recognise uh, Graham relatively quickly. But just to give you a quick bio on Graham, and as I mentioned, uh, Graham, correct me if I'm wrong here, but however, you were born in 1958. 57, most of your, 57 older than you oh, 57, okay. Oh, yeah, yeah, thank you for that. Uh, spent most of your life in Brisbane and you were first elected into local government, which blows me away, in 1985. Yeah. I was actually born in 1981. Uh, and you served as the 16th Lord Mayor of Brisbane from 2011 through to 2019. That's right. In 2019, after serving 34 years, uh, serving your Brisbane community, I should say, you stepped down as Lord Mayor to retire and just concentrate on family and other items of interest. And one of those items of interest is, is actually bringing more awareness towards the issue of bullying. And to be fair, this is why we're here today to speak about the link of bullying and mental health. So, Graham, I want to uh, say welcome to Under the Radar. Thanks very much, Wes. Great to be on the program. Yeah, I really appreciate you taking the time. Now, I must say, Graham, from one human to another, I just want to say thank you for your 34 years of public service. Um, would you believe I've actually always lived my life in Brisbane? Uh, bar four years of being overseas when I was 21. However, home is Brisbane, and I actually strongly believe, and I think you'll probably agree, that we live in the best city in Australia. And I'd actually argue, no joke, the world. So I just want to say thank you for being such a positive influence in making this city great. That's very kind of you, Wes, and it's been a great privilege to serve the city. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I, a couple of questions I must add that, that I've got the privilege here. I guess over your time in Brisbane, you know, what, have, what has been some of the biggest changes that you've seen Brisbane experience? Well, I think we've grown up a lot as a city. We were... Um, a city that was branded with the tag of, you know, a big country town for a lot of years. And we saw some big events which changed that. I think the first of those really big events that had a marked impact on us was Expo 88. Yes. yes. Uh, that was the cultural awakening, if you like. It opened our eyes a bit to the world, Expo 88, where we'd previously been a bit cocooned and a bit insular um, and, um, and fairly conservative, I suppose, as a city. And so, um, but, but since that time, I think we have really progressed now. We are a thriving metropolis today. Um, I can remember even when I started doing citizenship ceremonies in 2011, I used to announce that, you know, 24% of the people of this city were born overseas who yes. are citizens. And uh, by the time I left, that number had actually grown to 31%. So it just... Wow. It shows the, rap the rapid expansion of what we are as a, as a very much a, a mixed bag city, um, yes. if I can use that term, yes. but where we, where we embrace a whole range of different cultures and, and enjoy each other's experiences and, um, and backgrounds. Well, would you believe actually my, my father's Romanian? So dad was a migrant that came here. So he falls into that category. And, and mum's Australian. She's, she's an Aussie from Maryborough. Uh, yeah. But, uh, yeah, we, we, we definitely fall into that percentile. But um, it, just my observation, you know, I'm, I'm 40 now, uh, and I totally agree we have gone from a country town into an international city and actually one thing that I say to people, particularly people from uh, Sydney or Melbourne uh, or outside of uh, the city, Brisbane gets better every year. Like there, it, every year there is something new being added, you know, facilities, yeah. infrastructure, restaurants, yeah. uh, the, you know, the rivers, you know, bringing its own life to. Now we've got bridge, more bridges coming on. It's, it's, been, it's, it's great. 
Yeah, and I think that's right, Wes. It's it sort of um, each year you've got to look to, well, what's the next step in the um, progression of the city? Yeah, and part of the, the, the thing is to not lose the what I describe as the friendly feel of Brisbane yes. as we grow, uh, but also to modernise and to yeah, capture, if you like, the internationalisation that a lot of cities are today. We're very blessed that we are very welcoming and friendly people. And for me always, it was, as you grow, don't ever lose the fabric. Um, uh, the original Brisbane was an interesting one because a lot of people came in from country Queensland to live in Brisbane. And uh, I know my own sisters, for example, they were Longridge-born. Yes, uh, yes. Mum and dad were Winton Bar Calden. And um, so you saw a lot of that, that people came to Brisbane but they came here with this genuineness of country flavour. And, uh, and, and as I say, that is really the essence of what Brisbane is. We are, um, and, and this is where I think we differ a lot from other places like Sydney, if I can just make the comparison quickly. Um, we are, are competitive, but we are cooperative. Yes. Uh, in Sydney, it's probably a little bit more what I call dog eat dog in competition. I 100% agree. Yep. But, but we, we here, we kind of support each other. We're competitive, but we support each other. We, we want each other to grow and to prosper. Oh, well, actually, one quick observation, actually, because uh, we our businesses are in Brisbane and Sydney, but I say in Sydney, you know, people keep their head down in the morning and they don't generally acknowledge each other if it's early. But here in Brisbane, people will actually acknowledge you across the road when you're walking, It's, it's it, particularly if it's early. Um, yeah. But that, that probably segues me into my next question. You know, I guess 34 years of politics from 1985 to 2019, you know, what were some of the changes that you saw in that sphere? Yeah, well, it's vastly different. I think the language of politics um, has changed enormously uh, and, and not always for the good. I think also some of the structures of um, uh, governance these days restrict leadership a lot more than it used to. And even in the couple of years since I've left the mayoralty, it's got even tougher on allowing our elected officials to lead um, yep. You know, uh, and I don't think that's necessarily a good thing. Um, when I was first elected in 1985, it was very robust, but it was kind of, and, and you'd, you know, you'd take, uh, there'd be a lot of sledging that would go on, but in a friendly manner, and it was a very colourful place if you're in the council chamber in those yeah. days, it, it's become a lot more precise, a lot more restricted in terms of things. Mm -hmm. And people can argue whether that's a good thing or a bad thing. I think it's taken a fair bit of the colour out of it. But I, yeah. I can I can remember what I was when 1985. And you know um, what you saw of Graham Perk then was a vastly different one to what people would see have seen me over the last few years of my mayoralty. And it was simply reflecting that, well, this is the way things have gone. Um, and as I say, there are some good elements to that, but there's also probably some retrograde elements to it as well. Um, but I just hope that we don't create so much governance restriction that leaders are not allowed to lead. People elect, elect people to have a vision, to represent them. Uh, if something that, you know, the public service is doing that is, is not in keeping with your view of what people actually want, that that's where a leader steps in and says, no, we want to go in this direction. And I think that that is becoming weaker, and I don't think that's a good thing for our country. Yeah, well, 34 years has definitely been a lot of change. Now, I guess getting into our view, interview, what actually brings us here is to discuss bullying, which, yes. uh, you know, to be fair, I think no matter what time frame in life, bullying has been an issue. And I'm glad we're having this conversation because well, we at MAF truly believe um, bullying affects all groups and particularly the young. Now, Graeme, even though we are different generations, did you witness bullying through your years at school? And, and if so, what were some of the characteristics of bullying uh, for examples to our audience? Yeah, well, I mean, um, I think a lot of people experience bullying a lot more than what we probably think. Yes. And I still have, you know, very vivid memories in um, you know, my primary school years in particular. I, I can still remember the name of the guy. 
yep. who was just constantly at me. And uh, and it, it does affect you. There's no question about it. Um, you know, I um, it, it it destroys your self confidence. It, it sort of um, it, you know you go back into your shell where you might be kind of in a natural way more outgoing, and it it takes time. I know it took me time to rebuild um, after that. Some years, in fact, and um, uh, you know, in that situation, I was very fortunate. My my mother actually stepped in and approached the school about it. It had started to affect me to that extent and so um, I was always grateful for that intervention and uh, because it did have a positive outcome and and as I said while it still took me some time after that to to uh, regain confidence at least the incidence of bullying did slow down significantly after that intervention yeah and I, I must say, just just one thing I've learned in life is to to be vulnerable. And I, and I must admit that I was actually bullied at school. Mm-hmm. Um, however, I actually was a bully uh, at school, and it wasn't until later in life, once you observe your behaviours, which I deem very poor, um, you know, you realise the impact both from being bullied and bullied. And you know, it's 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 definitely something as you get a bit older, you realise what long-term or effects you can have on on a person yeah well that's absolutely right so I think it's just you know being aware of your own actions um in terms of what if something it might even be as simple as something you're saying yes uh, and just what impact that can have on the other person uh, because you, you never know the background of that person either you, and you don't know just often that few words it can have an enormous difference and impact so so yes um it's something to be always cautious of i mean as a as a culture i suppose one of the things that that we love to do is to if i use the word the term take the mickey out of each other you know a little bit of sledging and, and that sort of thing a banter yeah and that's kind of good in the sense that it's a it's a mateship characteristic but i think when within that context though we also have to be just understanding and be aware of how the other person is receiving that and if it's if it is clearly having a negative uh, receipt in terms of what you're doing you need to stop you need to intervene you need to explain that mate look this is this is no, no nothing intended with this this is you know, maybe my way of trying to be funny and I maybe took it too far, I'm sorry. And, and that probably leads me into my next question. And thank you for opening up about your experience in bullying at school. I guess, you know, you mentioned self-confidence. Was there any other side effects from being bullied at school for yourself? That that was, for me, that was the main one. It was a yes. lack of confidence, yeah. Yeah. Um, but it depends on what the extent of bullying is. I mean, if it's yes. if it's very and mine was physical, but not physical to the extent where it caused damage physically. Yeah. Um, but there are many incidents we know where you know a very significant physical damage can also uh, result. And um, and you know sometimes that can be life lasting. Uh, yeah. So you know it's it's. We've got a long way to go in this yeah. department and it's we've got to continue to work to fight against bullying. I do actually, actually, one thing I do remember being back at school, particularly sort of in my older years, uh, I was a local boy at Ashgrove and just, you know, I guess policies bet- towards bullying started to come out. You know, there was a lot more awareness as I was leaving school and, and now I think obviously there is, you know, strong awareness towards towards bullying at school and I think there is you know one of the things even with mental health you know we're trying to make people more aware you know the awareness is of the key about bullying and being able to step forward and say hey if this is happening to me or step forward to say this is happening to someone I think there's definitely more awareness towards it now. There is there's a greater I think um, propensity for people to intervene now yeah. um, you know, there was when I was growing up a bit of a bit of a case of you know suck it up or you know uh, toughen up and, and that sort of thing. Whereas I think 
today we're saying, well, no, it's not a matter of toughening up. It's a matter of, you know, you shouldn't be being bullied in the first place. So, so the whole kind of ambit has changed and, and that's a good thing. Um, actually, at the Mental Awareness Foundation, we have, I guess, a, uh, a saying, spot, speak, support. So spot a friend in need, speak to your friend, support your friend. You know, I guess if, if you could go back a little bit in time, you know, what are some of the behaviours that we should look out for in our friends that may be suffering bullying or, or mm. doing that? You know, is there anything that, you know, characteristics that you would see? Well, I think behavioural change yes. and sudden behavioural change or, or even behavioural change that's happening over a period of time. I mean, that's always the first signal that something is going on here. Yes. And and I think the mistake a lot of people make also is they might just say, you OK, mate? And then they say, yeah, yeah I'm fine. And then we just drop it. So uh, if, you, if, you, if you, your consciousness is telling you that, something isn't right here, you've got to go further than just asking the question. You've got to delve in and 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 really take an interest, take a, yeah. take a closer and deeper interest. And and that probably speaks to, I guess, the, the speak element. You know, if, if you've got a good friend that you care about, you know, just take the time to, to perhaps just probe that little bit more, right? Yep. Yep, absolutely. And, and it might not be bullying. It could be any aspect of, you know, depression or, or, or something that's not going right in their life. They might even have a medical issue. Whatever it is, if, you, if they clearly are showing the signs that something's not right, then, yeah, you need to make it your business to get in there and, and get, get close to them. Yeah, definitely. And then, and then that leads us into supporting, you know, supporting them. You know, how, how would you suggest to support someone that's perhaps been bullying or suffering with mental health? Well, I think um, emotional support mm -hmm. is, is number one, very important. Um, and for them to have a, a go-to person and they're comfortable to, to talk to about it. Yeah. But, but also then to um, get as much information as you can and to see what intervention you might be able to adopt. Yeah. And my mum, my mum was my intervention tool uh, and God bless her for doing what she did. Yeah. Uh, so I think that is, that is the key, not to let it sit, but to act where you can on it. And actually that, that leads me into my next question. Now, I, I personally don't have children, Graham. Um, however, I know within our community we have a lot of parents and, um, you know, that will watch this interview. Like what, what are some of the tips, you know, obviously seeing your mother support you, you know, what, what are some of the tips to, to parents out there that, you know, their child is perhaps being bullied at school? Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, I'm very fortunate that my own children have not been faced with bullying. Uh, and um, but, you know, I think this is it is to constantly be on the lookout for yep. things that might be concerning them. You know, if they look like they're worried about something to delve and find out what it is, what's what's going on in that mind yep. uh, and and then to do whatever needs to be done. Don't sort of sit back. Don't 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 think about it. Just do what needs to be done to intervene, to try and get the matter sorted. Because it's in nobody's interest for for that for that bullying to continue. Yeah, it's just just adds more heartache. And 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 don't think it that uh, that Aussie thing of she'll be right. It's 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 not it's not an area where that that uh, that that falls into that category. Absolutely. Absolutely. Now, I, and I guess that brings me to the next question. You know, if someone's watching this video and they are actually experiencing bullying themselves, you know, what is something that you or some tips that you would recommend to them? Yeah, well, I mean, there, there are some defensive mechanisms. And again, depending upon what it is. Um, um, so to try and avoid the situation where you're going to be confronted with that bullying would be one tip that I would give. Um, you know, don't put yourself in a position where you are going to be bullied. Um, but also, uh, to you, you've got to develop exit strategies from the from the situation, and, and uh, 
And, you know, there's a, there's a range of, of mechanisms depending upon the circumstance, whether it's a physical bullying or a, um, a, a mental bullying through verbaling or just what sort of bullying it is. But, um, but you know, you need to, where you can get some support as well, to some support to try and prevent it from occurring. And I think there's a, that link, like we, we encourage people that are struggling with mental health to, to take the courage to actually speak up, you know, yeah. take that step forward and, and not, as we just mentioned before, not ignore the situation, you yes. know, and, and step forward. And, you know, if, if perhaps that safe person is your mum or your father or, or just a friend, but I think just taking or have, first having the courage, but then also having um, trust in someone that you can speak, speak to them about it. Absolutely. The last thing you want is for it to linger on and on because it's, it's no way back. It just gets getting worse uh, unless you intervene in the issue in some way. And, Graham, if, if, I, if I had a time machine and we could go back to your younger self, you know, mm -hmm. what do you think you would say to yourself back then, you know, if you could send a message to that person? Yeah, well, I... <laughs> Well, I would say not to let it get me down, yeah. uh, to put the blame, if you like, on the other person who's doing the bullying, uh, and I'm talking here mentally, yeah. rather than blaming myself for not being able to stand up for myself better. Yeah. Uh, because you're not at fault. Um, you're not doing the bullying. You're not the aggressor. Yeah. Uh, so why should you be blaming yourself? Yeah. Um, so that is probably above it beyond anything else the message i'd give to that young graham quirk in grade seven i'm actually i'm actually even hearing a message and correct me if i'm wrong but you know forgive forgive yourself you know don't 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 beat yourself up forgive absolutely yourself. yeah absolutely now mate we've had and i i didn't know this until i i obviously learned about this interview but you've got the pleasure of knowing one of australia's uh best and brisbane uh boxing champion jeff Horn. I do, yeah. Jeff and I are second cousins. I've got oh, no cousins. way. Okay. Great yeah. cousin to his dad. But, uh, yeah, young Jeff, I've known since he was in nappies and uh, yeah. uh, he's a great kid, a very gentle kid outside of the ring. Yeah. Uh, but, of course, he's been the subject of bullying, which was the very reason that he got into boxing. Yeah. Okay. okay. Well, that that I didn't know. Well, actually, I was because I was going to um, mention here just to people that are listening that, Jeff actually was also a, a school teacher uh, prior yeah. to him. Um, yes, that's, that's right. But the story before that was um, when Jeff was in high school, um, he suffered very bad incidents of bullying. Yeah. And, um, and so how it all happened in terms of his boxing career, he went along to learn some self-defence. Right. And um, the trainer that was giving him some self-defence saw some talent beyond just learning self-defense and uh and they devised a plan he said son i think i can take you to the olympics and while jeff thought it was a bit far-fetched at the time they devised a plan they continued to work on it and um jeff then started to have a few little amateur bouts and yeah. and he went as australia's representative to the london olympics uh, only just missing the bronze medal yeah. uh, he finished fourth in the london olympics and so from there, he um, uh, they he turned professional, and uh, and as we know them, took on the the legend of boxing, Manny Pacquiao. Yes, and uh, won the Battle of Brisbane. So uh, which I was actually at. Him. I was I was at that event. Would you believe? Yeah, yeah. that was an unbelievable day. What an unbelievable oh, just the the weather, the crowd, the you know it was a uh, an early morning, as you know, because of the, the the US thing. But it was uh, it. it, it Talk about a, a, a battle. It was a true battle. Yes, it was. It was. Uh, but, but you know, for people that see the Jeff Horn in the ring, you see a gladiator. Yes. But you take him out of that ring, and he is just the gentlest of kids. He yes. was never meant to be a boxer. Yes. It became a means to an end because of bullying. And, uh, and that... Um, uh, so that's the greatness of the story. Um, you know, a kid that was bullied became a school teacher and then, then went on to become the champion of the world. And obviously being family, my understanding is that you've collaborated um, in, in a film called Slugger. 
um, yeah. which sort of touches on it. Do you want to do you want to go into detail about Slugger? Yeah, well, Slugger is a twenty-two minute film, and um, we've done it as a, a short film. It's an anti-bullying film. Jeff actually is a star in the film, but we've also got, you know, some uh, genuine actors, and I'd say that in terms of the people out of Neighbours and uh, other productions um, in Australia. Uh, and so uh, I think there's someone from the Seven Network and the Ten Network. And, yes. and so um, it's available. In fact, we just recently got the the film to go into every school in Australia as oh, an well anti message. Yeah. So that will be big. Um, and uh, one of Jeff's boxing sponsors also backed us with this film, which we're very grateful for. But if anybody wants to watch it, it is a pay for view, but it's very cheap. And it's on www.goodflix, that's G O O D F L I X. Uh, dot tv if they just go into that and then uh, you, you search for slugger it comes up very easily and it's a dollar 99 a dollar of which goes to bully proof australia yes. as a sponsorship for that organization mate and thank you i i wasn't aware that you guys had both collaborated but what a legacy to pass on because as you say the story of being bullied and then going into boxing and then now creating a film which I guess the benefit of films is that it can be around for a long time and if that message is there and that goes into, you know, majority of schools in Australia, people are going to see that story and that's going to change, I guess, kids' perceptions of bullying. Absolutely. And that that's the whole intention of the film is to, you know, send the message. Um, and, of course, it adds to what Jeff is already doing, which he's visiting a lot of schools He's it's teaching some of the things that we talked about earlier, the methodologies. What do you do if you're, uh, you're going to be physically bullied? What, what's, the, what's the stance that you take? And, and he takes kids through this, what to do, how to position themselves, yeah. how to, to uh, if you like, neutralise an aggressive situation. Yeah. Uh, very important defence tools. And I must say, you know, what, how, what an interesting uh, situation because you've got Jeff, you know, growing up, being bullied at school, but then becoming a teacher and probably perhaps maybe even witnessing something as a teacher. You know, I guess we do have teachers that particularly are in our community with mental health. You know, did Jeff have any, um, I guess, advice to pass on to teachers, you know, about bullying at school, you know, what to do or uh, ways to handle that? Or do you talk about that in Slugger at all? Is there any advice towards teachers? Yeah, well, well, very much in Slugger there is um, a clear message, and and the while it's it's a, a drama in terms of uh, a short film, it, there is also a very clear underlying message in the film, and there is some some tools in there as well, which will be a benefit, which is one of the reasons that you know it has got, got a wide distribution in schools now nationally. Yeah, and mate, congratulations. Now, Graham, I guess, you know, life doesn't stop, it continues. It you know, and 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 well done for doing your work. You know, what's what's the next 12 months got installed for you? Well, look, I've got a range of things on the go. I haven't sort of stopped. So one of the things that I started was the Olympic Games bid back in 2015. Oh, yeah, true, yep. We did Thank that you. in conjunction with the Council of Mayors of South East Queensland, but we did four years of um, pre-feasibility studies and, and full feasibility studies before anyone really got interested in it. Yes. And um, But now it's within the, the cusp of becoming a reality. So that's going to be really big for Brisbane going forward. My job's basically probably finished there. I did a lot of voluntary work after I left the Meralty, talking to regional and uh, rural Queensland about an Olympics and what it would mean for their areas, even though they weren't getting gold medal events there. Yes. Um, but I've got a number of other roles um, on the Board of Infrastructure Australia, for example, and Racing Queensland and a few other things that I'm, I've got which keep me pretty busy these days, but it's, it's, it's great. I've got that life-work balance finally. Yeah, <laughs> no, yeah, well, try and keep it, try and keep it, be careful. My mother retired uh, 20 years ago, and I reckon she's just as busy uh, in retirement than she, than she was at work life. But um, um, two more questions, Graham. Um, now, actually, I must say, you probably see this picture behind me. Mm. 
Now that was, and you'll find this interesting, this is actually our walk for awareness, which is under the Captain Burke Park. And yes. would you believe that crowd that's there is 2019, uh, the year that you finished up um, uh, as Lord Mayor, we actually had 3,100 people come down, which was our biggest year because it was pre-COVID. Yeah, so, um, mate, thank you for uh, the, we, we working with council and thank you for being yeah. allow, allowing us to create such a good event. But it brings me to my next question, you know, being in mental health, you know, it's, it's it's all about, you know, how do you, or we ask the question, how do you take time for your own mental health or your own mental wellness? Yeah, well, I think, you know, one of the problems in today's society is too much time on these things. <laughs> um, and on screens, what are we doing right now? But anyway, um, but the, for me, it is making sure you get physical activity. I, you know, I still do a lot yeah. of physical activity. Um, it's the greatest mind clearer that there is. And so you, you just have to be careful, I think, in this day of, of technologies uh, that we take time out to clear our head, clear our mind for our own mental health. Yes. And so for me, uh, I still, believe it or not, uh, do a little bit of running around paddocks and things like that and yeah and, and, and uh, so but even if not that fast walking yeah. things that will get the heart pumping and clear the head you know it's um um for me that's the that's the best mental health piece i can do each day and thank you for sharing that and actually we at math we we believe uh, participation and exercise is actually one of our strong recommendations to people, particularly getting outside. And um, not, I'm not too sure if you're aware of the story, but I lost two mates to suicide 11 years ago, three mm -hmm. months apart, and this is how this walk started. But it was getting outside and exercising that allowed me to bring some clarity to the situation and actually allow my mind to sort of ease and process and 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 what you're saying was so, is so true just getting that exercise is such a way to either give you that relief or just clear that mind yeah absolutely you've got to do it got to do it and now my final question which is the most important one graham you know if, if you could get a message out to thousands of people what would that be be kind to each other be kind to each other we're uh you know, we're, we're on this planet for a certain amount of time. Yes. Um, you can make it a very enjoyable and interactive experience for good. So just be kind to each other and everything else looks after itself. I just want to say thank you for finishing on that because it, it does link into the bullying message. Uh, you, know, you know, let's be kind to each other no matter what age group we are. And, you know, and particularly this era that we're going through with, with COVID, let's just think of others and, and, and be kind and, and carry that all around the world. So, uh, mate, thank you for sharing that. Thank you, Wes. It's been lovely to join you. Yeah, thank you, Graham. And I really appreciate your time. And you have a lovely, uh, lovely 12 months of And, mate, good luck, Brisbane, for the Olympics. Absolutely. Best wishes, Excellent. everyone. Thank you, mate. We'll finish up. Appreciate your thank time. Bye-bye. Thank you.